He's gonna shove it. Yeah! He's gonna shove it. Brick to the head, boys. Thank you for bearing with me during the house move. I get done what I can, you know. Now on Ring at the Hawk, we always listen to the fans, especially when they pay. Which is why today we're doing a Patreon request from Paul Rico. Or is it Riccio? Who knows? So if you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And while you're at it, join us today on the Fly Into Graceland World Tour as we fly together to 100k subscribers. And if you say you're not, you're just a bunch of liars. And of course... If you know a wrestler that can do the J-O-B to the H-J, W-K, any night, any day, ha-ha, shut the name in the comments, Jack! All right, let's do it. Spike Dudley. He dropped a lot of acid in TNA, but it's not the reason he's ugly. Match one, six-man tag is the team of America's most wanted teaming up with... Oh, that's great. I take a break for a week, but some things never change. A wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. He's accompanied by Gail Kim, and they take on the Dudley boys and Spike Dudley, who is going to be brother runt for the purposes of this video. Slapnuts jumps Runt straight away and fires him into the corner. Spike makes a few pinning attempts on Slapnuts, but he keeps kicking out. Spike is a house on fire and he hits a headbutt to the gut, followed by a net breaker. Yet another two on Slapnuts. Spike is overly confident and he tries a top rope dive, but Jeff stops him. Surprisingly, Spike fights him off again and Spike hits him with a double foot stomp from the top. Jeff has to bail to the outside in fear. AMW jump him, but the Dudley boys make the save for Spike. Then Bubba press slams his own partner Spike above his head and throws him to the outside on top of his opponents. Exciting start to this video. The match turns into a wild chaotic brawl. Spike is truly owning Slapnuts here. I think I finally discovered his weakness. Spike Dudley is super effective against Jeff Jarrett. Whilst the brawl is going on, Slapnuts is somewhere in the back with Spike. He can't do much though because the rest of the Dudley crew attack Slapnuts. Harris comes into the ring and he easily overpowers Spike Dudley. He hits a big time catatonic, which is his finisher. But he can't end the match because everyone starts hitting their own finishers. Gail Kim beats on Bubba's nutsack, so Spike gives her the Dudley Bulldog, aka the acid drop. Then Team Canada appear and distract the referee. Rudy Rude uses the Canadian flag on Spike, which allows Slapnuts to hit the stroke for the win. Well, at least it wasn't a guitar. A decent debut here. He looked pretty strong against the strongest main character on the TNA roster. I expect we're going to see a lot of hardcore wrestling in this video, but there wasn't much to be found here. He had more of an impact than his brothers on this match, so he's getting a C for his debut. Before match two, there's a match graphic, but they don't have a moving one for Spike, it looks so stupid. Match two, lockdown 2006, capture the flag match. Bobby Roode, Eric Young, and uh, A1 with Coach Damore versus Brother Ray, Brother Devon, and Brother Run. They have a load of crap all over their faces, except for Devon, he doesn't have anything. Not seen one of these flag matches before. Spike and Eric stand around like idiots playing defense on the flags. Eric takes a dive so then Spike copies him and hits a dual drop kick on the Canadians. Young gets taken out so no one is protecting the Canadian flag, so Runt smartly tries to sneak across the ropes to grab the flag. Unfortunately he gets caught and thrown into the cage. The highlight of the match is a top rope bubba bomb on Rude. That one looked like it hurt. Young tries to capture the flag but Spike stops him and hits him with a double foot stomp. He sprints over to capture the other flag but he's too short and Rudy Rude stops him. Spike tries to mount some offense on Rudy Rude, but he fails and gets hit with a double R spine buster. The match is going okay, but then there's a ref bump. The Dudleys hit the 3D2 and then a flapjack on A1. It looks like they're about to win as well as Spike assists the what's up on EY. They collect the American flag, but the ref is down. The Dudleys music starts playing, then it stops and the commentary explains that the match isn't over because the ref hasn't seen it. Spike tries to hit the acid drop, but instead he gets sent into the cage and powerbombed. Eric Young returns the American flag to its holder. Scott Demore is attacking people on the outside and he puts a table into the ring. Spike is set up and Eric tries to hit him with the elbow drop but he misses and Young crashes through the wood. Spike starts a fiery comeback of a headbutt to the gut and an acid drop. He continues dominating as he sends Rudy Rude into the cage. The Dudleys hit the 3D and then Spike collects the flag to win the match for the Americans for the second time. We're now supposed to hear the USA National Anthem. <laughs> it doesn't happen for some reason, I'm not sure quite what happened. This was the stipulation, they were meant to stand and listen to the National Anthem of whichever team won. Everyone just stands around awkwardly not knowing what's going on. The crowd have to sing the song for us instead. 
Spike did well here again and pretty much won the match for his team, so he gets a C. There wasn't really much more to say, there's no need to spray. Spike is just standing around in the interview segments looking like a derpy fool. I have no idea what's wrong with him. Match 3, Victory Road 2006, 6 man, no DQ match. The James gang, which doesn't really look like a gang, in fact it's just two guys who think they're in 1999, and they team out of Abyss with James Mitchell. They take on Team 3D. Abyss comes into the match and like a complete idiot, Devon tags Spike in. Bit of a size mismatch here, don't you think? He squares up with the monster but he doesn't seem to be scared. Spike tries a crossbody but bounces off Abyss. The monster throws him up into the lights and lets him come to the ground. Spike realises he's outmatched and tags out. It doesn't go much better and Abyss takes out the other Dudleys. Spike still isn't scared though and he charges at the monster who... Holy hawk, Abyss throws him into the crowd, ECW style. He even gets to crowd surf for a hot minute before the crowd just chuck him over the barriers like a complete piece of trash. His brothers don't care and they're just in the ring drinking beers. Everyone fights their way up the ramp and Spike dodges an Abyss attack. He throws a chair into the monster's face and follows it up with a double foot stomp off the entrance ramp. The hardcore fighting continues in the ring and Bubba staples a sign saying ECW fears TNA to the monster's head. Spike's still in this one and he hits Mold Dog with a trash can. Mold Dog retaliates by trying to put Spike for a table with a flapjack but Bubba saves him. Spike tries to hit Abyss with the acid drop but Abyss stops him. He tries to black hole slam him through the table. Oh, it doesn't really work. And that's the end of the match, bit anticlimactic. Not a bad one at all though and Spike was entertaining, I give him a C. After this Spike became obsessed with Abyss and he actually cut some good promos and he hit a massive dive on Abyss off the entrance way. Match 4, Hard Justice 2006, Abyss with James Mitchell versus Spike Dudley. He looks like a crab person. He starts out the match by slapping Abyss, but all this seems to do is anger Abyss, who tries to throw him into the crowd. Spike fights it off though. Spike hits some headbutts to the gut, but it's not having much effect. Abyss boots him and chucks him into the crowd again. Spike isn't that hurt, and he comes back and hits an acid drop across the crowd barrier. Spike is suicidal here and he dives down onto Abyss from the outside. The man with the mohawk that isn't Jesse Neal, or Jeff Hardy's stoner friend, tries to turn it into a hardcore match, but it's not one. Abyss throws him headfirst into a chair in the corner, and the referee doesn't know what to do, so he half-heartedly turns away. What an idiot. Abyss puts Spike on the top rope, but he gets a chain from somewhere and he smacks the monster one. A double foot stomp only gets a two count on Abyss. Spike manages to hit the acid drop, but it's just another two count. Then there's a ref bump. Abyss cripples Spike with a shock treatment backbreaker. Then, uh, Abyss gets the dumb tax, just like every time. The most overused part of his gimmick. I must have seen this a thousand times, it stopped being impressive after the third time. Something different here though, as Abyss stomps Spike's head into the tax. This fires Spike up for some reason as the crowd go nuts for him. He tries a comeback, but Abyss throws him through the air and he crashes into the tax. The monster then hits the black hole slam. The ref counts the three despite there clearly being tax everywhere in a no DQ match. I'm not sure why they didn't just make this into a no DQ match, they clearly didn't want to follow the rules. A really nice match to be fair, I like these David and Goliath type matches. I'll give Spike a D for the bumps he was willing to take and getting the crowd completely behind him. At least we can move on to something new now, not involving Abyss. Every video I make seems to heavily feature the idiot. Match 5. Match of 10,000 tax. Not again. It's Stevie Richards all over again, isn't it? This is all it's gonna be, isn't it? Abyss with Father James Mitchell versus Brother Runt. Runt charges him and hits the acid drop straight away to zero reaction. He picks up the tap bag and batters the monster in his big stupid head. Spike tries to dive off the apron but the monster catches him and smashes him into the post. Abyss and Mitchell then set up a tap board on top of the table and then they stack another one on top of that. Abyss attempts a powerbomb but Spike fights it off. They make it back to the ring and Abyss tries to stomp him into the tax again, but this time Spike dodges it. He tries an acid drop into the tax, but Abyss turns it around and slams Spike into the tax, which is apparently the end of the match. Last time I watched one of these, they could slam their opponent into the tax as many times as they liked. Kind of a letdown that it's over just with that. Abyss tries to throw Spike into the tax tables, but Raven appears and he saves Spike because they were both in ECW, I guess. Raven, with yellow contacts, knees Abyss in the face and he falls through the tables. Then straight after, some men march out with guns. I thought that Spike and Raven were about to be lined up and shot, but instead, it's just a wild slap nuts appearing. Spike Dudley lives to fight another day. It's a D for this match, at least we can look forward to seeing something different now that feud's over, as Raven's probably going to be feuding with Abyss now, right? 
Match six, no surrender 2006. Triple threat, no DQ match. Abyss, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Why is it always him? I swear to God I don't have a problem with this guy, but the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. And all I seem to be doing is reviewing Abyss matches. Abyss can shove it, and Father James Mitchell can get hit of a brick. The other competitors are Spike, who looks homeless now, and Raven, who also looks homeless, but then again, he always did. Spike starts out of a weapon shot for everyone, but he gets double teamed by both men. With Spike eliminated from the ring, they start fighting amongst themselves. Spike comes back in after rearranging some trash cans. He has a cane and he's whacking Abyss off. Spike and Raven throw Abyss into the trash can. There's no friendships in this match as Raven clotheslines Spike. Spike sends Raven out to the ring with a dodgy looking drop toe hold. Spike soon joins him on the outside as Abyss throws him out the ring onto Raven. Raven didn't like that and he gives Spike the Russian leg sweep into the crowd barrier. They head back into the ring where Raven smacks Spike with the trash can. Spike dodges another shot and then he starts a comeback hitting both guys. The best bit is Spike hitting the ring bell into the monster's nutsack. The crowd go nuts. Raven puts on a helmet from medieval times and he starts smacking Brunt with his head. Never have I ever seen this before. They head up the ramp and Raven sends Spike down the entrance tunnel, another new spot for me. The monster gets a ladder from the tunnel but he doesn't bring Spike back with him. Raven's on the table and Abyss wants to head up the ladder but it doesn't work. Raven puts Abyss on the table and he's going to put Abyss through it. But whoa, out of nowhere, Spike flies from the ceiling with a double foot stomp. He doesn't catch him properly. Raven's annoyed that he partially blew the spot, so he shunts him with the ladder as punishment. The Raven then puts a dog collar around Spike's neck and he reveals that he's got some more tables stacked up. Raven hangs Spike off a stage by his neck. I think he's trying to pull him up, but he just can't do it. Jesus, that was brutal to watch. He was getting hanged. He does get him up eventually in the end and Raven punches him off the stage and he goes through one of the tables, but not both. Not a good table record in this video. Spike is now dead. Raven wants to pin him, but it's not a no falls count anywhere match, so he's an idiot. Raven tries to pin him back in the ring, but Mitchell puts Spike's foot on the ropes. Raven then tries to give him a bulldog, but instead Abyss appears and gives him the black hole slam for the free. I actually enjoyed this one, saw a few things I hadn't seen before and Spike showed that he's not afraid to put his body on the line. This one's a B. Now that he's lost in every match of Abyss, there's definitely no need to keep this one going. What would be the point in having any more Spike Dudley Abyss matches? TNA wouldn't be that stupid. We've seen it all, there's nothing else to see. Match 7, TNA bound for glory 2006. Spike only seems to be wrestling on pay-per-views, like he's a main attraction or something. What does he think, he's Hawk Hogan? Four-way Monsters Ball match. Oh, fuck off. This right here is the definition of purgatory. Constantly being forced to watch two idiot wrestlers smashing into each other. Someone break me out of this cage. This YouTube channel is becoming torture. I actually think that Wes Briscoe would be an enjoyable change of pace on Ring of the Hawk at this point. And that pace would be slow, clunky and full of grease. But at least it wouldn't be Abyss. For some reason, Jake the Snake Roberts is the referee here. So at least that was cool to see. So the match is Abyss with James Mitchell, yep, I'll hang in there, versus Spike Dudley with a blue mohawk and a red beard, versus Raven in some sort of fetish mask, versus Samoa Joe. One of these things is not quite like the others. On a side note, that plaster on Joe's head is from Kurt Angle headbutting him a week earlier in his debut. Raven gives Spike a hip toss into Abyss onto a chair. Later on, Abyss throws Spike through the air as he falls to the floor. Then he picks him straight back up and throws him into the crowd. It's less impressive every time. Some huge bloke in the crowd catches him, so it looks pretty fake. Samoa Joe hits a corkscrew dive on all three guys on the outside. The match continues as they brawl to the back of the arena and Abyss and Spike are climbing up some sort of scaffolding. Abyss choke slams him off as Spike looks like he's caught in the wind. Then Abyss dives on top of him. It's a huge comfy looking trampoline thing. They get Spike back in the ring, but Abyss can't make the pin as Raven breaks it up. Then Abyss gets the dumb tax. Jake the snake also has a bag, but there's no thumbtacks in it. Raven won't let Jake get his snake out of the bag. Abyss soon regrets getting the dumb tax out because Samoa Joe drops his full weight on top of him on the tax. That's like a small camper van falling on you. Joe wins the match with the muscle buster. No idea what happened to Spike. He completely disappeared. Maybe he fell asleep on that comfy looking bed. He started out all right, but then he faded. And when I say he faded, I mean he completely disappeared for the final five minutes. This one's a D for his performance. The fans go home happy because Jake puts his snake on Raisin in the end. Match 8, also featuring the fucking monster Abyss. But hang on, it gets worse. Fight for the right, reverse battle royal. Kill me. 18 wrestlers lumbering around on the outside of the ring. Oh, what a surprise, Spike is fighting with Abyss. 
everyone is running around like headless chickens. Despite them all getting in and out of the ring multiple times in a match normally, they all seem to be having trouble making it into the ring this time. Spike almost makes it, but the Monster Abyss stops him. Then Spike gets stopped a second time. Styles and Daniels come into the ring like it's a big deal. Fortunately, Abyss makes it into the match, so Spike may not have a chance as he's left away from Abyss on the outside. Unfortunately, I was wrong, and it wasn't to be. Spike was unable to climb into the ring. Shut it's an it! S to the cows come home. Match 9, no DQ street fight. Homicide versus Brother Run. Oh, thank God, it's something different. Run jumps in without an entrance. Runt stamps on him and sends him out of the ring. Then he crashes down on top of him from the top rope. Runt looks like he's moving at a thousand miles an hour and he throws a chair at Homicide. You've got to move fast when you're in a two minute match. Runt charges on the ramp but Homicide throws him overhead and it's not a good landing for Spike. Homicide then puts a ladder around his neck and smacks him with a chair. They come back into the ring and Runt hits the acid drop. This one might be over but then Conan is here distracting the referee. Hernandez is in the ring and he hits a big time border toss on Spike on top of the ladder and Homicide's your winner. It went two minutes, but it was a fun two minutes. LAX want to do more damage, but Spike's brothers make the save. It was too short, so I can't give it more than a D, but I enjoyed it. Match 10, six man tag. Homicide and Hernandez with Conan team up with Alex Shelley, who seems to have changed his nationality. They take on the Dudleys who are accompanied by Johnny Rods, who's apparently Devon's trainer. He looks more like the Iron Sheik. Spike stays out of the ring in the early game, but Bubba brings him in eventually. Runt hits the stomp from the top on an atomic drop and a clothesline for a one count. He also gets the better of Hernandez before Shelley takes him out on the outside. The match then goes as you would have expected as the smallest Dudley is isolated. Shelley hits him with a frog splash, then Hernandez hits a far bigger splash. Spike manages to get Devon into the match but I expect that he's now dead. Well, it turns out he wasn't because Hernandez press slams him overhead and throws him into Devon's trainer on the outside. Devon's looking chubbier than ever in this match. I'm not sure what happened to him at this point. Maybe that's why they had to bring his trainer in. The Dudleys hit a 3D on Shelley through the table with the ref distracted. Then Hernandez rolls up Devon and the ref wakes up to count it. I'm sorry, but this was a pointless Spike Dudley appearance. He's a complete afterthought now, and I'm going to grade him based on that. So Shut it's an S. Match 11. Exactly three years later. Nobs and Sags, the Nasty Boys, and Jimmy Hart versus the Dudleys who have been feuding with the Nasties. They reveal their last minute partner is Spike Dudley after Jesse Neal got taken out. He looks like he's aged 10 years in free. Devon brings Spike in who comes at Sags with a double sledge from the top. Spike starts going nuts and headbutting everyone in the gut until the Nasties take him out. They then take Spike on a one way trip to Pity City so he's now dead. Sags slams him and brings his partner in. Nobs is obese and bright red. Jimmy Hart is actually in this match and he comes in and puts the boots to Spike, but Spike wakes up and tags his much bigger brother in. Later in the match, Spike hits a big time dive to the outside to take out Sags. Jimmy Hart then distracts the referee and Nobs uses a motorcycle helmet to hit Bubba and take him out for the free. A pretty bad match. The fight continues afterwards and Jesse Neal makes the save and it ends up with a bad looking freeway 3D through the table on Sags. This one sucked bird oh, no. turd, it's an S. Match 12, final match, Hardcore Justice 2010, Freeway Dance. Brother Runt, who's in full ECW mode here, versus Al Snow versus the War Machine Rhino. Spike tries a test of strength with both guys, but loses. Runt then shoves Snow out the ring and almost rolls up Rhino. Rhino floors him for it. Snow comes back in and he hits a backbreaker on Spike. Runt's doing well and he sends the guys out of the ring and he tries to dive on both of them, but they catch him and hit a double fall away slam. Spike's out of the match for a while now, but he comes back in with a double foot stomp on Snow. He also tries to hit the acid drop, but Rhino throws him across the ring. Then something truly incredible happens as Runt hits a head scissors. It was about time we saw a new move from him. May as well save it for the final match. Runt tries a double acid drop, but instead he gets the guardrail on the outside. Then there's a ref bump. Spike has a steel chair, but he smacks it against the ground and collapses on the floor to try and get Snow DQ'd. Snow isn't having it though and he does exactly the same thing. The ref wakes up and is confused. Spike then manages to hit the acid drop on Snow after running off of Rhino and he pins Snow to eliminate him. Straight after Rhino gets up and he hits him with the gore and then Rhino pins Spike so the match is done. I enjoyed this one, it was really entertaining and it made me laugh. That's what I watch wrestling for. It's a B for taking some big bumps and entertaining me. So there was actually one more match. I know we don't count B shows on Ring of the Hawk, but this one intrigued me from one night only Hardcore Justice 2 in 2013. It was a tag team tables match in the main event. 
The Dudley boys versus Spike Dudley, who now looks 60 in five years, teams up with Jeff Hardy. Actually, I regret watching it. It was probably the most nothing table match of all time. Jeff wins with a splash through the table. So why am I talking about it? I don't know, just to drag the video out. It's not even worth Jeff doing the Swanton bomb on a B-show. Right, so that really is it now. We just need to give him a final grade. You, the fans, gave Stevie Richards a D for his TNA run, and this Spike Dudley run certainly drew some parallels. However, I think Spike's match quality was better. He certainly put his body on the line, and that's what counts on Ring of the Hawk. He actually cut some okay promos too, which might surprise you. Don't get me wrong, there was nothing amazing here, but there was enough to keep me entertained. I'm going to smack him a low C. There's no need to pee. And if you ain't down with Spike in the C zone, don't whine, don't moan, or I'll hit you in the head with a Nokia 3510 phone and break your bone.